go to March, April, May, 1635 is again the winter on cold, and this time 1636 on heat. Some differences, but uh, really not something to write home really about. write home about. Uh, we go to the summer, and again, surprisingly, little <coughs> difference between 1639 and 1637. And then we go to September, October, and November. And again, this is. Take this with some very large grains of salt, because remember, not only were they doing these proxy reconstructions, if you looked at the original papers that these things are based on, let's say they were using tree ring data. Well, they didn't have good tree ring data that extended from 1500 to 2000 for every grid point. So they would have a tree there, a tree there, a tree there, a tree there. Maybe they'd have a couple of hundred trees scattered across Europe. So then they, they took that, they created their proxy series for each of those individual ones. And then they had some program that depended on a climate model of some kind for interpolating and filling in that obviously makes certain assumptions as to what's going on with climate that might or might not have been true then. So we get into a certain amount of chicken and the egg situation that to fill in, we need to know about the climate, but we need to have done the filling in to really calibrate the climate model for that period. Basically, it's by guess and by golly. By guess and by golly, Three but pictures. better than nothing, and it gives something to go on if you want to use it. And that brings me to the perturbation area. <coughs> One of the nice things from the authorial standpoint about the fact that this ring of fire has the, the a butterfly effect, certainly on weather, and to a degree we're about talk about potentially on climate is that for the author you rather get the boat us the boat all possible worlds here. If you're content to rely on what happened historically, then as long as you don't fall into the the fallacy of assuming that a specific weather event fell on the same day it fell historically, you can make use of this and you can say, well, the temp froze over in 1635 and I'm going to assume it did the same and I'll talk about the skaters out there and the frost fair they held selling hot goodies and all the rest of that and put that in and use that as part of the, the mise en scene of your story. On the other hand, if for some reason it's really inconvenient to your story dramatically <coughs> to follow what this is showing is happening, say, in Spain in 1637 in the summer, you can use the butterfly effect of the climate as an excuse for changing. Indeed, most of the time if you're writing a story, you're looking at weather effects anyway, and the weather effects are totally scrambled. You can do whatever you please. But even with climate, you know, where you're talking, <coughs> one moment, uh, if you're talking about things like crop effects and uh, 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 growing the degree days, where you, you, what crops you can raise in a particular area, is there a crop that you used to grow back home in Grantville that you can't grow or you can't get as much of a crop in now that you're in uh, Thuringia as you did before, you, you still have on uh, one particular year could be warmer or cooler than this is predicted. Yes? Um, I wrote a story called uh, The Man in the Pocket where uh, uh, the, the rescue had to take place, uh, there was a battle, the rescue had to take place on the Thames. It was in January. After I wrote the story, I did some more research and found out that the Thames was frozen solid across at that point. You could have walked away.
away from the battle where they left in boats. So now butterflies are very convenient for, uh, for <laughs> Now, as the canon develops in our 1632 universe, if you're working in the same time periods and more or less the same geographic region as an earlier author, you're going to be bound to degree by what they've shown of the climate. It Continuity seems that at least around in the Germanies, there have been frequent references to of the, it's really cold here variety. And so you're not going to get away with a really butterfly effect that says, oh, there's no little ice age anymore kind of thing, because we've made it very clear that we've got a continuing path. But you certainly can change weather, and you have a little bit of give on the climate side. But you <coughs> have this stuff to go on if you wish to rely on it. Yes, but if you write anything in Holstein in a certain year, you're going to have to plan on a lot of water. Right? I would point out, though, that as an American who studied in Germany in the 1960s, in that part of Germany, the American plaint was, it's really cold here, even <laughs> <laughs> they weren't having a whole lot of city. God, for him, it was cold. I don't know where you were, but, oh. That was the 80s. Uh, that was so we have global climate change, don't we? Oh, sure, the climate's always changing. If you don't Some of you may years. remember uh, on that. It's also what you're used to. Some of you may remember of this, which country. was from the conclusion of my little Ice Age article. In 1371 to 2, there were processions for rain at Florence in December, followed by processions praying for the rain to stop in May. <laughs> so people complain about the weather and there's really no getting around. Okay, let's talk about the Ring of Fire and what its effect would be. At first when I started looking at this, I tried to get an idea of what the size of the perturbation was and try to compare it to other things. And the most obvious thing to compare it to, I thought, was a volcanic eruption. That's extrinsic to climate effects, it's, and uh, it causes a change in temperature in the immediate area. It injects greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and the like. And yeah. the concept here, it, it's not just the fact that the, 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 the sphere from the future shows up. When you start a new timeline, every single uh, yes, yes or no decision could go the other way. So the okay. probability I changes. Have, I'm only looking there at the direct climate, weather and climate effects of the ring of fire. Obviously, indirect effects can occur. So, for example, if because of what people learn, there's a decision to make a in mass switch from use of wood to use as well, coal no, as a no, fuel, no, 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 that's I, going to have climate effects. But in probability, okay, if you've got a probability of a raindrop falling to the left or falling to the right, doesn't yeah, matter if there's any human interaction at all, it could go either way now. It's a new future. Actually, yes, before we go any particular, guys, we're a little, we're like five minutes over. Over, it's five or seven. For people to move around if they want to. So if you need to go to another panel, uh, 